Good day, Andrew, Natalie, good day, Lydia, and good day, Chloe and Blake. I'm glad you could be with us today. So we're going to look at this particular picture here to help us with our vocabulary. This picture is called Les Ochamiers. It is by a French painter named Maurice de Vlaminck. All right, and what did Morris de Vlaminck look like? This is what he looked like. So this man here, this gentleman here, painted this particular picture. And he painted that, uh, oh, around the turn of the century, something of that nature. All right, so this picture is of that town, La Chemires, and we're looking at that to look at our vocabulary. So the first word, first thing we want to look at is line. We've talked about lines before, a lot of different uh, directions that lines go. And so let's see once what kind of lines that we can find in this particular picture. We're going to start with vertical lines. Vertical lines, remember, go up and down. And so let's see if we can find some vertical lines. Yes, the telephone pole is a very good vertical line. And there is another one there and another telephone pole there. The sides of the doors are vertical, very good. The sides of the chimneys are vertical, very good. So that's your vertical line. Horizontal, that's from side to side, horizontal. You can remember horizontal because the horizon the end of the road, the end of before you start seeing the mountains and stuff like that. So it's a horizon, and that's going side to side. Do we see any horizontal lines? I see some in the chimneys over here. And there's not too, too terribly many. That's a sort of horizontal, but it's got a little diagonal to it. That is the next vocabulary word, diagonal, diagonal lines. And there are a number of them. We have the diagonal of the roof. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. You have the diagonal of the, the road. And that diagonal of the road goes all the way in to the horizon. And that is going to be something we're going to be looking at in a little bit when we talk about perspective. Okay, so we've been looking at this. <clears throat> cool colors and warm colors. Cool colors are your blue, green, purple, and your warm colors are your orange, yellow, red, sometimes purple too. So what do we got here? Is it warm or cool? Cool colors or warm colors? You say, well, both, you're right. So the sky is a cool color with some of the grasses over here. They're cool, but then the I don't know if it's a field or the side of somebody, the back of somebody's house or whatever it is over here. That is a warm color. And the roof of their houses are warm colors too. So it's almost a 50-50 with your warm. The road is also warm and your cool colors. Okay, so what is the foreground? Do you remember the word foreground? Foreground is something that is in the, the front. Okay, so what's in the front, the foreground? Well, in the front we see these grasses. We see a little bit of road and some more grasses over here. This might be wheat. That might be just grass. That looks like a little, maybe it's a person. I don't know. And that is probably in the foreground too. So that's the foreground in the, in the front. The background is something way in the back. So what is in the background in this particular picture? In the background, you can see some hazy mountains back there. That is the background. So we're going to be talking about perspective. Last time we talked about the perspective of the bird's eye view perspective. This time our perspective is called one point perspective and it comes to this particular point right here and that's where your eye is going in your perspective. All right, so that's what we're going to be doing when we do our picture. And so let me show you what we're going to do. We're going to do watercolor painting. So let's just swap this out, put this over here. That is what we're going to be doing. All right, 
But before we get started with doing this, we want to talk about it a little bit. Where's our messy mat, as I like to call it? All right. One point perspective. We're coming to this particular point right here. And if you can notice the word hor horizontal that we were just talking about, that is a horizontal line, and that is also the horizon. Okay, so that is one point on the horizon, and that's where all of our um, focus is going to be going. We're doing watercolor. Okay, watercolor is where you use water and your watercolors. And so you're familiar with that. So make sure you have your watercolors available. I really, really like to have them that have the vivid colors. And so if you have those, great. If you don't, that's all right. And then we have to talk about our brushes. Brushes have three different point, place, three different things. You have the brush, the bristles, then you have what's called a ferrule, and then you have the handle. We like to call the ferrule a danger zone because we don't want to touch the danger zone. When we're doing our painting, whatever we're going to be painting, we don't want to get our fingers down by the brush. We want to hold it back a little bit, okay? So we need to know those three parts of the brush, and we're going to put that aside and we're going to start working on this. To start working on this, we need a piece of paper, a watercolor paper would be not the, one of the best thing because it works better when you're um, working with the watercolor if you have a thicker piece of paper. You're going to need your watercolors. You're going to need to have some water, a brush or two. I'm going to use two different brushes, I think. One for fine details and one for um, when I want to cover a big spot. We're going to use a ruler this time. We're not going to worry about inches and millimeters and all of that, but we want to have a straight edge. So we're going to want to use a ruler and a pencil. And so this might take you a little bit to get it together, but you can do this. Just not halfway through, but a little bit higher. You're going to want to take your uh, ruler across the page and just make a line. I already did that part on this particular thing, so I don't have to do that. Now what we want to do is we want to have some somewhere right in the middle, we're going to do a dot. That is going to be our focal point. And then, just like we did right I did before, we want to do some mountains. Now I've got four mountains going on here. If you just want to have two, that's up to you. I'm going to have that one's in the background, and this one's going to be in the front, in the foreground of the mountains. And then we're going to do one over here, and then another one. So I have four mountains going on back there. All right, and then I'm going to do one more in between these two mountains, a little arch, and that is um, for my son. Okay? Now this is where you're going to really have to use your... Um, your ruler because this particular point is where you want to put your pencil there and then you take your ruler and you go to the edge of your paper and you draw a line okay and then you're going to do the same thing over here anywhere it doesn't really matter but from that same point and draw a line to the edge of your paper you're going to want to do it again and it doesn't really matter how many lines that you do you're just going to have to paint in each one of these, so you just keep that in mind. But you start from that dot, and then you go to all the way to the edge of the paper. All right? And you want to do, when you're counting the lines, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay? You're going to want to have the, an even number. All right? So one, two, three, four, five. All right, I'm going to do another one this way. Six. Let's see here. Maybe I'll cut this one in half. Seven. Eight. Why would we want to do an even number? It gives it more balance. All right, this is pretty big right here, so I'm going to just 
do two of them down here so it makes it so that it looks a little bit there's more balance to it okay this is a little bit thinner than this one is that's okay these are bigger than those that's okay it really really doesn't matter you just want to have an even number of lines so even two four six eight ten something like that all right now we're on into the painting part fun 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 all right get your pencil we're using watercolors so when we use our watercolors we have to wake them up so we get some water we're going to do the sky first so that's blue you always go to the very very furthest away the background first and so we're going to waking up waking up the blue wakey 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 we put some water on there and then we'll go here and we'll paint our sky all right there isn't a whole lot of paint on that so we add i mean so we add a little bit of water to it so we keep on adding water and paint we're going to go around the i hope you can see over my hands there you're going to go around the sun where the sun is going to be I'm going to go around where the mountains are going to be and we're going to cover that whole thing in so when I go back and forth and not a whole lot is coming off then I add a little water we don't want to add too much water okay because then you're going to be just floating away on your picture here you want to make sure that you have just enough. How do you know you have just enough? You go in there and you start painting. And when you go in and you start painting and nothing happens, you know, there's not a whole lot, well, add a little bit of water because there wasn't a whole lot that came off of that brush. Okay. And then we can go over what we have done again. Since it's this watercolor, if it's not dark enough, we can go over it again. If it's too dark, then we can just spread it out. All right, so there is our sky. And you have all of the remember this is how we do it um, with the sky. Now we're going to wake up our black. Wakey, 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 wakey. Black is fun color to paint with. Oh, look at how dark that is. Now, the fun part about this here, we're going to be making the uh, mountains. But I'm starting at the bottom, and I'm just going up. But I'm not going to go all the way up. I'm going to just sort of go a little, you know, swish, swash, something like that. Swish, swash, swish. Because what I want it to look like is I want it to look like there is some snow on the top of that. Okay. So I'm not going all the way, all the way to the top, but I'm trying to get as much as I can on the bottom. And then right here, since we're going to be having another mountain right next to it, I'm going to do it as dark as I can so that you can tell the difference between this mountain and that mountain. So let me re remind you here. See the snow on the top of those mountains? That's what we're trying to get when we do these. Okay, so here we go. Let's see what happens on this one. Boom. All right. We go across the horizon. And we go up with our blacks. And it's nice when we just have had some snow, so we know how it snow looks. Sometimes the snow is going to be a little bit here and there, and sometimes it's going to be a lot in one spot and so okay there we go that's good I think I'm gonna just do it like that there we go now I've been using my right hand and going to the right I can't go the other way very well so I'm gonna turn my page and that's okay to do you can do that you don't have to do it all the um, with your right hand going left hand wise that's sort of difficult to do so we're going to do it this way, turn the page. And so now I'm doing it where my mountain is upside down almost, or sideways. But it's going the direction that it needs to go, and that's what we wanted to see. All right, so we have one more mountain that we want to do here. 
I want this edge to be really dark so we can tell the difference between the what mountain that's right next to it. So we're going to try not to go too light on that part. There we go. And we'll keep on going here. Finish the mountains off. There we go. But now I'm going to go back and make sure that the lines go from the bottom of the mountain all the way to the top in an angle type of a thing. And this one, maybe a little bit less snow. It might be a wintry day, but not that wintry. All right, rinse my brush off, rinse my brush off, rinse my brush off. We don't want any black now because we're going to go to a different color. We're going to go to the light, lightest color there is on the paper. Okay, I don't have a towel to wipe it off on, so I'm just rinsing it and painting on the side here. I forgot to bring a towel. So we're going to go to the yellow. Wakey, 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 wake up my yellow. And we're going to do the sun. Boom. Brighten up the sun right there. Yeah. I'm going to try not to go over the black. A little bit wouldn't be a big deal, but I don't want the colors to mix. Okay, so now that the sun is, is done, I get to go down here and do this part. So we're going to do every other. Let's see, green, and then this will be yellow. This one here. This will be green, and this will be yellow. This is going to be green, and this is going to be yellow. Green and yellow. Green and yellow. And you can do that if you'd like to. Just put a little strip of the yellow one so you know which ones you're going to be doing yellow. Now, I'm not going to paint this whole thing in front of you here. I'm just going to do it a little bit. I'm going to do it just the, the tips on this side so you can see how it all works out. And then you can do your own painting, the whole thing from the top all the way to the bottom. Oh, look at that. I did it in the wrong spot. Yellow, yellow. Yeah, I, oh, I, I messed up. So how am I going to fix that? Okay, well, let's go back and do the yellow ones that are supposed to be yellow. Okay, so that's going to make everything look yellow up here. Okay, I didn't skip like I was going to. All right, so let's change my colors. We're going to do the green now because we're going to do green and yellow just like in my example. And I'm going to start up here and we're going to do green, 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 green. And this is one of the reasons why it was a good idea to start with the lightest color. And I'll show you in just a second. Like I said, I'm not going all the way to the edges because that's going to take a long time and you're going to get tired of looking at me. But as I go over top of that, that I already did by accident, it still looks green, doesn't it? It has a greenish yellow tint instead of just all green, but that's okay. It's going to make it look interesting. All right. So that was called a beautiful oops. Remember that story? Go ahead and look at that story again and remind yourself all about beautiful oops. You can make mistakes and it's okay. You can fix them. And that's just what I did right here on the camera while we're talking to each other. I made an oops and I fixed it. And it doesn't look too bad. It's going to look fine when we're all through. So how it's going to look is just like this. All right. You're going to have the color going all the way to the edge. And the point of this picture is the perspective, one point perspective. Everything is going right to that spot there and coming away from it. Might take you a little bit of time. You might have to take a couple of times and just, I'm done painting for today and come back and do it tomorrow. But you can get this done and it's going to look really, really pretty. All right. 
Thank you so much. I'm glad Chloe and Blake could be with us. Have a good week. We'll see you next time.